All right, guys, we can't enter the afterlife until these scales are balanced. Any ideas? Uh, I mean, I guess we could atone for our sins. Okay, okay, making better choices. I like it. We could remove that brick of cocaine on one side of the scale that's weighing it down. <laughs> oh, shit, I've been looking for that. Here, I'll grab it and see if it helps. Nah, looks like we're still going to hell. Welcome in to the Bro Four Squad podcast, where we are just a bunch of bros drinking beer and talking TV and movies. I'm your host, the Bear Jeff Hornacek, and this is our review of Moon Knight episode five, titled "Asylum." Joining me, as always, to review this on the Four Bro Four Squad criteria are the Mad Scientist Brian Banner and the American Hero Nate Thurmond, and the aforementioned criteria are the acting in the episode, the story of the episode favorite scene in the episode and theories or questions going forward so uh banner let's start with you the acting and cast in moon knight episode five what do you think i think they underutilized ethan hawk i think i think he was brilliant and one of the only good things to say about this episode i think before we get really into it the context is important for this show uh, I think, and if, if I'm speaking incorrectly for someone, please correct me, but episode one, we were intrigued. Episode two, we were very close to bought in. Episode three, I was fucking digging it. Last episode lost us. This episode has continued that downward trajectory, I believe. Uh, Nate, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and then also anyone mm-hmm. acting-wise, positive or negative, you want to talk about. Uh, no, we're pretty much on the same boat. <clears throat> and even after last episode, I feel like I was maybe the most optimistic one on here um maybe some faint optimism just trying to hang on and and structure it in my head to where i could like it but after this um yeah it's just not doing it for me and it's not even necessarily the episode in and of itself it's just the structure of the whole series which we'll get into in a second um but for the acting and cast uh yeah pretty much echo what banner was saying um and adding to that i did not like the hippo at all God damn it, that hippo was fucking ridiculous. I, the voice they're doing with it, I, it just doesn't fit with me. If, and if he's really like in the um, Duat or whatever it is, like the afterlife for the Egyptian gods. Cool. Like, where did she, where did she adapt that voice? I, and maybe it, it's a projection of himself. Or, and why or he's, is he's a fucking hippo moving us there? I, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But the, yeah, I was not a fan of the hippo. One uh, performance that I actually thought was kind of interesting, and it's put in the middle of a shit sandwich in the way it's presented to us. It's just absolutely absurd. But uh, was Fernanda Andrade, who played Wendy Spector, Mark's mm-hmm. mother. I mean, that's some heavy shit that they get into. Now, the vehicle with which they deliver it to us completely undercuts, I think, the entire message. And if this is supposed to be uh, a way to present uh, dissociative personality disorder, I would just, and I'll get into this in a second, but... Like, why is the show structured and written this way at all? It, it's not serving the story, the characters, or even the world in any way at all. Um, but the powerful stuff that she had to do, even though I thought it was put together really poorly, and sort of, like, it's such a minor part of this entire series to this point, even though I feel like it is really important. If it was done more, uh, in, in more quantity, I think, it would be even more effective. But I felt, I felt it, like... You feel the pain of Mark, even though it was done, I think, in a pretty half-assed way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, her limited scenes were pretty, pretty powerful. Like you said, pretty, pretty heavy stuff that she's having to deal with. But um, the message came across, made me feel uncomfortable the whole time, which, as it should, if, if she's pulling off, pulling off the acting. Right. And I don't, I don't have it pulled up in front of me, but we always talk about how hard it is to get kid actors. That kid that played uh, young Mark, uh, I thought it was really good. I thought his transition from the American accent to a British accent like that was uh, was pretty good, especially for for a kid actor. Yeah, I was impressed with him. Yeah, um, yeah. 
especially considering like that's a weird like the how the director even had to explain that scene to us probably kids are like what yeah okay all right ready to move on to story and plot <clears throat> yeah if we have to all right according to imdb mark and steven search through their memories to find their truth or become left behind nate what do you think of story and plot oh boy um it just took way too long to get to get to this point. Um, like overall, I'm 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 kind of fine with where it's going as far as everything that happened, episode one through four up until the last five minutes, did actually happen. It was real life. But now we're getting all this background that I wanted like three or four episodes ago. Um, it's just so out of order. It's tough to follow and it's tough to like actually hang on to the story now and like dig in and be like, Oh, this is his haunted past. This is where he was at. Um, this is how he was driven to be a mercenary and become country's avatar and all that shit. It's just so disjointed. Uh, it lost me before it got to the meat and potatoes of the whole series. Yeah. I wrote down if it, this episode felt like the show it was almost like a challenge where they said, how can you deliver the important information in the show in the most pretentiously eclectic and convoluted way possible? Like mm -hmm. this feels like how someone who is like a, a major in screenwriting and has a really s snooty and stuffy professor would write the story mm -hmm. of Moon Knight. Like why is any of this delivered the way it's delivered to us? It's really fucking annoying and it's unnecessarily complicated, I think, and doesn't benefit the story at all. And I don't know if I should put this in story or scene. It is criminal and really starting to piss me off. And it's actually blower down on my list of complaints. Where the fuck is Moon Knight in this goddamn show? Yeah. I mean, we didn't see him once this episode. Well, the brief transformation, but it doesn't do anything. And then we didn't see him at all last episode. We've seen him like do two Moon Knight things in this entire series because I'm not counting what he did at the end of episode one where he threw one punch and then stood up and the camera went into his chair. Like, this is yeah. bullshit, man. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I yeah, know. I completely agree. Yeah, there's, there's not enough of the uh, namesake for the series in this at all. And like I said, this should have been episode two. Um, yeah, or episode three of the latest, just giving us that background. But th this is the shit we were complaining about, and we're actually trudging along with it as it went along. We're like, we're confused, we need a little background, we don't know exactly what's going on, but we trust the process. And then the process just got turned on its head, and they did everything completely backwards. So it's it's not making a lot of sense to me. And like the uh, the development of like his character. That would be fine if they did it in the correct order, but I just can't jump on board with it now. It's and it's all over the, the place. The lack of Moon Knight, you can't even say it's an origin story because, and Brian, I'll, I'll send this over to you. It's really not, right? It's not. When, when we meet Mark, he's already been Moon Knight. So they can't even act like, well, man, we had to set all that shit up. So you kind of knew what was going on. No, because you didn't set any of that shit up. And I kind of now know what's going on. I just don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean... The story in this is a jumbled fucking mess. I think that there are really, I think there are some really cool and really interesting things sprinkled into the series. Um, but when you add all those together, they're just not adding up right. Um, the first four episodes, I, I personally liked this episode as an individual episode. I I liked how we show we got to see where Mark's anger is all rooted from and all this stuff with him, him and his mom. Um, I I kind of liked how we were Stephen learning it all for the first time and seeing his emotions to all these atrocities that uh, have happened in, in Mark's life. The episode as a whole, I liked it, but it, it didn't pay off four previous episodes as it should have. The four, the first four episodes could have been combined into two. This should have been your third episode. And then that leaves you three other episodes to explain to me what the fuck is going on. Because I still don't know what the fuck is going on. I, I, I don't know. Like, what are we doing here? I guess even if we put the narrative aside, which, like, I don't think there's been any surprises there. Like, Harrow, since pretty much the beginning of episode two, 
has told us his plan and we've kind of known where that was going. And I was interested in that. So let me ask this, and I'm not asking this question to be an asshole. I'm like genuinely wanting to know the answer. So this episode five, I guess you could, let's not call it a reveal. Let's give the showrunners more credit. <clears throat> we learn that Mark and Steven or I guess Steven specifically, was created to mask or a place for Mark to go to hide from his pain, right? Yeah. And the trauma he had as a child. And then ass assumedly, because again, the unreliable narrator, we can't really trust anything. Assumedly, Steven dies or that persona goes away at the end of this episode. So what does this, I guess, new information actually add to anything? We've already known he's a split personality inside of Mark. Uh, we already know Mark's done some horrible shit in his life, which he's told us explicitly. I guess we learned that he had a brother who died named Steven, but like, does that, I mean, what does that really do for us at this point? Not too much. Um, because at the end of the day, what he he's on a journey right now to the field of reeds to the afterlife because he is dying right now. Um, ultimately where I see this going is they're going to unlike country somehow. Well, kind of, Drifting into theories and questions here, but unlock Conchu somehow. He's going to save him and get him back to reality. Um, but I, I think that just kind of makes this a, a moot point at that at this stage in the story. Um, why Wait, did he have would... to get? Why did he have to get rid of Stephen? Because him getting rid of Stephen was him to balance the balance the scales, get to the field of reeds. Ultimately, I don't even think that's where they're going to go. He's going to go back to reality. Uh, I think that's just kind of a a jumbled way of telling his background. So, and I think you're exactly right. Conch is going to repossess him. He's going to come back as Moon Knight. But why did they show us this story? Why didn't they just show us the original time Conch did that to possess him? His actual yeah. origin story in sequence without this weird fucking fever dream. Epi I don't mean, I, I'm, if I sound angry, it's because I am. And if you think I'm a hater, this is the first thing from Marvel that I have actively disliked ever. And what, and what will really piss me off and... I see this as, this is a possibility, um, maybe in the next episode, or God forbid if they do a season two. Um, but in the comic books, there is a third personality. I can't remember his name now. I had it written down, Jack or Jake yeah. something. Um, Jake I said Bockley yeah. or something. Yeah, if they introduce him and they kill off Steven, like what the fuck is all this for? Like that was supposed to be him ridding himself of any split personalities or anything to hide from. And if he's still got this other personality, that he does that too. I mean, it's just. It's kind of a throwaway at that point. Yeah. I mean, if you're still digging this show, good for you. I really wish I was. I'm just I'm not. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Brian, anything you want to add before we go to best scene? I mean, the only way for this season to be salvaged for me is if after next week's episode, episode six, they go, psych, we got you. You have two more episodes. Because then this this would fit in... I feel like they could do more with uh, with the rest of the story because I don't understand what's I, I just I don't I don't fucking get it. Maybe I'm just not smart enough for it, but I don't I don't get it. So we're mad because Ethan Hawke is killing people or not killing people. No, he's trying and to release. On, I I'm not trying to sound like smart or anything, but like I, I think I understand like what is going on now. Right. Like, so he, he's he trying to release, to release Amit, Amit. and Kanchu doesn't know what that to happen. And why? But what's the benefit of of releasing Amit? Does Amit have like an army that they can take over the world? Or? He's basically basically going to do the same, the do the thing where he is judging people if they have good hearts or bad hearts, and kind of like in episode two, I think, where that lady was killed. Right. They're going to be judging people um, and potentially maybe killing some of the population. Another reference to the scales. I yeah. just that that is a stupid fucking plot. Agreed. I mean, and that, <laughs> it's whatever. I just don't like this. I don't like the whole story in general. So, I mean, the way it's being presented to me, it makes it really hard for me to give a shit about it because it yeah. seems this show just has ulterior motives. It's this weird, like art, artsy fartsy piece where it's trying to like depict everything is metaphorical. And like, I trust me, man, I can suspend disbelief, bro. Like I've been a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe since day one, and I've l been to every single movie, seen every show, including Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, and have pretty much loved all of it. And this has completely lost me. It is so interested in itself that it doesn't even need me to buy in. because It insists upon itself. That's a, it Actually, it really does. We joke, we didn't use the Peter Griffin quote, but it really does insist upon itself. 
All right, Brian, did you have a best scene? No. <laughs> That's a great way of phrasing it. You've never phrased it that way before. Did you have a best scene? Did you have a best scene? Yeah, this is a part – this has never been like an optional part of the review, but I fully <laughs> accept and endorse Brian saying that. Uh, Nate, has no, I, I literally don't. I was trying to think about it, and there were parts that I liked, but there was no specific scene that I was like, damn, that was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and kind of just taking it back and <clears throat> what Banner was saying a minute ago, like he liked the episode in and of, of itself by itself, not – in context of the season, <clears throat> I think I can kind of get in that mindset and pick out a favorite scene, which would be when they're at the wake or funeral of Mark's brother. Um, and that's yeah. really when uh, Fernanda and his mother, uh, really busts out, ha has her chance for like the one time in the episode to bust out the big acting chops and really drive home the root of mark's suffering and his pain <clears throat> being more or less blamed for his brother's death um and coming directly from his his mother someone he loves and trusts um so that 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 was like a good root scene for the development of his character overall now was it put in the wrong wrong timing in the season in episode five halfway through fuck yeah but just in and of itself i thought that was a great scene I guess I really love that scene. Loved, I mean, it's a relative, I mean, I thought it was really, really well done. And the scene where uh, young Mark, like, has his birthday cake with the candles and it's it becomes Ooh. evident to him that his mom is not coming mm -hmm. downstairs. But th that also just made me question, like, what story are the showrunners here interested in telling us? Because that stuff is really interesting to me and is, like, a powerful uh, the thing with, with like a family dynamic that Marvel's never really gotten into yet. And it almost it's felt like they, they put it in. Right. It, it felt like they put it in here because they're like, well, you guys need to know his backstory. And I'm like, well, I mean, you don't seem too interested in telling the story about Mark Spector as a mercenary. You don't seem too interested in, I mean, what do you want to tell? Is what, like, what's the point here? I, mean, I hate to bring that up again in best scene, but it's like, what are we doing? What's the point of the show? I sort of tongue in cheek wrote down, this is verbatim what I wrote for best scene. <laughs> I guess the first time we've gotten Moon Knight in two episodes for half a second with the flashback to Mark being possessed by Khonshu. It's always cool when the titular character shows up for seven seconds of screen time in a show, right? For the first time in two episodes. And again, I think there's a lot of stock in just that scene by itself. It, it, it does add a lot, but when they put it in the series it was shit. Um, and, and we're kind of, disassociated and disinterested now because of when they did that. But yeah, I would have loved to have this scene three episodes ago. That would have been fucking awesome. Like getting the introduction of Khonshu whenever Mark met him, he saved him from dying and all that. That would have been great building blocks for the next episodes. Brian, uh, I haven't listened to his most recent review, but our good friend of the pod, Ethan Simi on 15 minutes of Marvel, which is a great podcast. You guys should go check it out. Yeah. But he, this was his most anticipated Marvel property of the year, which is, telling and how much he loves Moon Knight. And he's been digging this. So I, I am glad people are enjoying it. I'm just telling you right now, this thing is so far beyond being able to redeem itself outside of some really crazy fan service in the last episode that I just am not having fun with it at all. Yeah. Yeah, I I just, I don't understand. Like, you, you kind of you alluded to it a minute ago. Like, I don't know what story they're telling here. Are they trying to tell the the personality story of mark and steven and how he got there and focus in on that and his his family dynamic him being a mercenary or all this stuff that's going on with uh haro and and uh releasing amit they, they they're not committing to any one of those storylines they're just like scratching the surface of all of those and then you can't do that five episodes into a six episode season yeah, to that point, I think Nate said in the text thread, he was like, we're at a runway here. Like, you got to, the plane has to fucking take off, and we don't even know who's, like, where the destination is yet. So, who's the pilot? Right. Yeah. All important things we should have figured out before we took off. And what's the, what's the mid-flight meal? I really need to know, chicken or beef? Well, I hope there's a vegetarian option. Not for uh, me. Not you know, that's me. true. We're going to have a big weekend, you know, take it light. Take it light on the plane. Right. Also, let's get a couple Jack Daniels. Neat. 
I'm down. Um, typically, it is the best part of the show, theories and questions. And I'm going to be honest, all of mine are sarcastic. <laughs> I have three. Fantastic. So, theories and questions to uh, end our review. Brian, I guess we can go round robin. Do you have anything that, I mean, this episode brought to light? Or are you like me where you kind of just want to rant a little bit? This is therapeutic. I... I I just wonder what the fuck we're go- what's going on. What are we doing here? For That's I think the fourth- three straight weeks you've asked yeah. what the fuck. Is- <laughs> like what the fuck's going on here? Like I don't, I don't, I just, I, I don't, I don't understand. I like I said earlier, I I really liked this episode. I thought that they did a good job of um, showing us the things we need to know about Mark. But like Nate said, it's in the wrong spot of the season. It's not. This the show is not being executed well as a whole. I don't like the show. There have been some really cool parts and things that I like, but they haven't been able to string a couple of shots together uh, for me. So I, I don't know. I, this is probably one of the poorest executed uh, properties the MCU has ever put out. Um, and then you parlay that with probably arguably some of the best, probably the best one-two punch. Uh, acting stigma, you're just wasting them. Right? <sighs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean... Arguably the best one-two punch that we've had in the MCU, aside from the Avengers, because we have everybody's number ones coming into that. Right. I don't know. So. Horns is kind of off the Oscar Isaacs train. Yeah, and this is kind of the case in point, where these things become, um, like, a, again, it's like a... a one man show for him. The, the scene specifically this episode, and I hate to kind of backpedal here, but where Mark and Steven were arguing uh, in the hallway of the made up insane asylum, and Mark starts like hitting himself in the head to try and like basically wash Steven out. I'm like, this is Mark's supposed to be the calm, cool, collected one of the group now, and nothing has changed in your dynamic, and yet he's losing his shit here. I'm like, I don't really get what's going on, but it's a chance for Oscar Isaac to emote, so you have to take advantage of that. Nate, how about you? Yeah. Three questions. Um, yeah, not too, too too much on my plate um, this time, but uh, what I briefly mentioned, I think this was probably segue into maybe one or two things you have. But um, it was briefly mentioned in in the episode that they're going to try and get Contra released and getting him getting him out to more or less resurrect uh, Mark at this point. So. Um, I'll be happy when that when and if that does happen, so we can get back into reality. Um, so I'm I'm assuming they're going to have to use the hippo lady, which was not a fan of, um, to implore some of the other gods um, to use some of their their magic or their otherworldly powers to get Conchu out for the better good, so they can get Mark back um, and reunite, and then we'll finally finally get some good Moon Knight. In this, well, in this let series. me ask you guys this because I guess this is a two part question. You know, you can go first. Number one, I think it's a fair assumption, not a fair assumption, it's a fair thing to ask and, and put the onus on the showrunners. Will this series end with us returning to the quote unquote real world? Do you think we'll get there? I, I don't even so. know what the world real world is anymore. Okay. I, I'm a, like, that's that's the <laughs> where they're in Egypt, and yeah, yeah. that's. That, For, to to my best knowledge, and presumably they, that's the real MCU world. Yeah, yeah, what they presented to us, they are right now in the fake insane asylum. They're on the boat. That is the afterlife. That is purgatory, for lack of better words, um, because he is dead because he got shot in real life. Um, so retaining back to the real world would put him back in his body in the temple, in the pyramid, wherever they're at. So do you think we'll make it back there in this season? I do. I think you have to. If they don't, like, what the fuck? If they leave, if, if they leave us hanging and he's still in this purgatory in the in the do what? Season two, baby. I don't even know. What I mean, <laughs> that's not even a cliffhanger. That's just a a, a broom up the ass. Um. Yeah. Now let's say this. So Mark's, because again, this se- episode ended on an almost a stupid cliffhanger as the last season. Like, I don't give a fuck that he's in this wheat field now. Like, just, Jesus Christ, can I see some goddamn Moon Knight in the show Moon Knight? I know that's a lot to ask. 
So if he gets back to the real world, becomes Moon Knight and kicks the shit out of Arthur Harrow and he saves the day, like, w- this seems like the most insane plot to a series of all time. <laughs> like, the most circuitous and, like, worst route or path to get to the ending that we could have possibly had, right? Like, it's just so much wasted time. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I can't see where I would even want this to go after the fact if that is what happens, which, I mean... That's honestly kind of shaping out how, uh, shaping up how it's looking like it's going to be. He's going to come back. We have a perceived strong antagonist in Hero now. Um, so that's going to be his main objective is getting back to him and getting him to stop what he's doing, raising Amit. But yeah, we, we, we come to the end and we're just like, okay, cool. What next? I don't, I don't know. The series started and he was Moon Knight trying to stop Arthur Hero. Now we've gone through all this bullshit, and the series will most likely end with him becoming Moon Knight, stopping Arthur Harrow. Yeah, I could see this ending. Um, like I was saying, it would disappoint me and piss me off <laughs> with the introduction of his third personality, um, which I, I feel like that would just be just a to slap, replace Steven. a slap in the face. Yeah, it just replaces oh. Steven, so it negates anything that happened in the duo in the afterlife. It, uh, Perfect. That's my theory. I think I have a strong feeling that's going to happen just because a lot of the shit that you see online pop up from the comic books, it does end up tying into the series or tying into anything that we've seen in the Marvel universe. So that third personality is going to pop up and I'm just afraid there's going to be a big slap in the face at the end of this. Yeah. Uh, This one is, I have as a question. So this show has had next to no Marvel cinematic universe connections Mm -hmm. way less than I thought. I think you can definitely make a story that is very self isolated, self contained, while still acknowledging the MCU. At this point, they're giving us middle fingers, just in our faces constantly, up our nostrils, in our ears. The astral plane reference, like, are you fucking kidding me? Just fuck off. You don't want this to be in the MCU, so don't have a hippo say the two words astral plane to me and <laughs> think this is connected to the MCU. That, to me, felt like a huge slap in the face. And at this point... That's where I'm at. Like, at least do something to try and keep the desperate people like me who are still watching because it's an MCU property and I want to make sure I keep up with continuity, but I'm disinterested. At least throw me one fucking bone. And a hippo saying the phrase astral plane is not that bone. I felt insulted by that. Am I blowing this out of proportion? Probably. No, but is it valid? I think so. Was what valid? Him getting just acting like this oh because yeah, I, I agree valid. with it it's fucking stupid like i don't know we're getting a second season guys <laughs> um <laughs> brian brian do you have anything else <laughs> no no i mean I, <laughs> I i i the only the only thing in my mind that this is we're getting a second season and i hate to say it i don't want a second season but I feel like that's the only route they could go to right this wrong. And I I know the MCU is going to want to right the wrong. They did it with Thor the Dark World. I hope, I hope they're cognizant enough to want to make up for some of the shit in the first season. Maybe we're in the minority. I don't know. Maybe. But we live for, in an echo chamber, so maybe it's... <laughs> I mean, it, it's a possibility, but... Um, for as connected as especially you two have been in the Marvel universe and the Marvel series and movies and everything. I, it's just, it's not an accident that we all do not care for the series. Yeah. I'll say this, this show's fucking lucky and maybe this was done intentionally, but I have Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness tickets next Thursday. So <laughs> this thing is going to end as a huge double tapered shit. And I'm going to forget about it in 12 hours because Marvel planned it right and dropped a turd right in front of my most anticipated movie, probably since Avengers Endgame, uh, in the MCU, even Spider-Man No Way Home as fucking cool as that was. I think this is going to have some badass cameos. And it's going to make me forget about Moon Knight, hopefully. And it'll be fine. Do you think Moon Knight will end on a cliffhanger and he shows up in Multiverse of Madness? I hope he's not in that movie. No. Right. I just, that I wasn't to, my question, though. I'm just very dis... <sighs> I don't think he'll be in I'll it. Say I, I, I don't see how... 
I don't see how he fits in. Yeah. I mean, at this point, he doesn't have a fucking suit. He's just a dude at this point. True. That was my, I guess, last thing I had. And Nate, I'm sorry if you had some, but this kind of ties no. into exactly what Brian no. said. Take it off. So it's a facetious question, but I think we can actually answer it. Has this, so I mean, this partially, again, facetiously, partially, earnestly. Has a show ever existed with less screen time or I guess less interest in the titular character? Like, imagine Seinfeld, but every episode centers on Newman or The Simpsons and all it is is Ned Flanders for 90% of the show. Like, we have not gotten Moon Knight. We have, we have had, and I'm not exaggerating, maybe 10 to 15 seconds of screen time for him in the last two episodes. Um, and even prior to that, we felt like well this show's got to pick up the moon knight stuff soon right like we've hardly gotten him at all we see him at the very end of episode one for maybe four seconds he's in episode two a decent bit um and i guess episode is episode three the one where he has the uh fight yeah, with like, the guys on horse yeah he's in three yeah. a little bit too yeah okay, so i'll give him that. but i mean it's really it's been a travesty i think and just ridiculous Am I alone yeah. thinking this? No, no. no it's, I will it's... say when he is in the suit, they have done some cool shit with it. Like in the that one scene where he he covers up uh, Layla with the cape and they shoot at him, and then he like mm-hmm. flings the cape and basically refires the bullets at the people. That was fucking cool. Give me give me a fucking hour of that. That's what I want. Yeah, I mean, I think I that's what's made it hurt even worse is the Moon Knight shit that we've gotten. I've been like, dude, I want more of this, and they just haven't delivered it. Been, I don't ever want to hear it's a budget thing, man. It's fucking Disney and Marvel. Like, I don't care if it's a TV series. They've got they've got unlimited cash. Yeah, but that's all I have. And we have anything positive to say before we let the people go? I mean, I, I hate that. We don't do this. If you're listening to our podcast for the first time, I promise. We don't sit here and just rant ever. Like, that's like the cheap. The only thing other to do time I can think of that we've ever done this was Last Jedi. Mm, that is true. <laughs> but go back and listen to Hawkeye. Go back and listen to Falcon Winter Soldier. Go back and listen to WandaVision. WandaVision, we had a, Loki. Few, a few choice things to say at the very end, just we didn't care for the way it ended. But overall, I thought it was a great series. Um, sorry, what'd you say, Banner? Oh, you're you naming all the shows Loki. Again, oh, I love that no, one too. I mean, Loki is Loki's yeah. great. great. Loki is one of my favorite series, just in general. So, I'm but, angry because I want to like this. Like, I'm I'm really really upset that I don't like this and that it sucks so much. Yeah, I think what I'm most upset about is that. Typically, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Marvel and to Kevin Feige. And it's really hard to ha- still have faith in, look, the MCU always has, has a plan. They're always playing the long game. They've never struck out like this. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to have the faith. I'm trying to keep the faith. I want to keep the faith. I will say this. Marvel has especially with their TV series for the most part, like Falcon and Winter Soldier and Hawkeye were safer plays, but they have been taking big swings and I do appreciate that. And it's sort of like the M night Shyamalan uh, rule where it's like you, you just inherently, when you do that, when you try and, you know, nut up and swing for the fences, you're going to strike out a few times. It just happens. So no, it's not fair to expect them to have a hundred percent success rate, but we also have to call it how we see it. And this, I don't even really think there's a way the show could end where I wouldn't consider it a failure, to be honest. Like, nothing within reason that could happen in the last episode. Yeah, it'd be pretty tough to turn this around. I mean, I don't want to say, like, we. I think we have the show figured out because it has... I don't want to say it's been unpredictable, but it's definitely been I out there. I 100% can tell you I have nothing figured out because I don't know what the fuck is going on. It's just crazy, like, totally random segue, but just looking at <clears throat> the last episode, episode five, Asylum, on IMDb has almost 9,000 reviews. 9.2. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's just us, but that's, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. Because I don't even think this is high concept. I think it's just pretentious. Yeah. Like, it's not like The Matrix, where it's like, dude, I kind of, 
this is like an, an allegory for a lot of things in real life. This is like them just spinning our wheels and it's not even fun. Yeah, at least we're all in the same boat together here. Marvel is doing better with bad guys, and I think that they've just fallen back into their own trap of having shitty bad guys again, or doing shitty bad guys again. Well, I think Harrow's like the one thing in the show that I actually like. Yeah, yeah, sure. but we're not getting any anything of him, so they're just they're yeah. But you their- can't say that they failed at the at the bad guy just because they haven't. I mean, this show has a shit, a laundry list of things it's done wrong. I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally put Arthur Harrow on the list. No, I think not the enough. utilization of him, not enough of him, is I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I think even when they do something right, like Moon Knight suit and Arthur Harrow, my two favorite things, and we don't really get that much of them. I got another question. What, what the fuck was he the therapist for? I don't get how he keeps snapping back and forth between the fucking boat with the hippo and then the office with the psychiatrist. Thank you. Yeah, I don't don't want to drag this out, but yeah. Yes, thank you. I totally forgot to bring that up. Like, he'll be in there and, like, get drugged or whatever, and they're like, I don't know. He's, like, in the afterlife, and then then he goes goes to another level. I don't – how does he get to the other level? It doesn't make sense. And it's like as as the creators of this, the people writing the script, you can just literally do anything you want because you can be like, well, he's mentally unstable. I'm like, yeah, but like there has to be some continuity to the point where like I can keep up with the story. If they yeah. snap again and he's at an orgy with a bunch of pigs and they're all dressed in like uh, Ku Klux Klan regalia, yeah, like that doesn't make sense. But you can't just say, well, he's mentally unstable. So that's why we put it in there. Like, yeah, he's mentally unstable, but the, the environment you have him in right now is he's dead. He's in a controlled environment because he's in the afterlife, which obviously this hippo lady is one of the gods who's there. So it's it's kind of controlled because she's done this before. She takes people on the boat. She takes them to the uh, field of reeds. It's not like we're in his mind right now controlling this. They're, we're in an afterlife. It doesn't make sense how it can jump around to his own accord because we're not in his controllable universe at this point. We're not in his head. Yeah. I digress. Just- I digress. And again, these aren't things I'm even interested in knowing. I just am pissed off that it's so convoluted and confusing. Yeah. Like, with, again, I hate to keep making the true detective analogy because this is not, it's apples to oranges in a lot of ways. But Nate and I were very confused at true detective, but we're like obsessed with finding the answers to the things we didn't know. Mm-hmm. With Moon Knight, I just feel like I'm being laughed at by the showrunner. It's Again, it's a Ryan Johnson situation. Well, the showrunners like... find it interesting that we're confused. I feel like with True Detective, the answers were there to find if you if you looked hard enough. Yeah. With this, I don't care how hard you look, you're not going to fucking get it. No. Or, not until they, it. I'm not going to fucking get it. Well, not until the, they wait until the second, the penultimate episode to reveal some of the most telling features of his childhood and what really shaped him as a human being. So. Yeah. Man, this was unlike – I can honestly say this is unlike <laughs> any review we've ever done. I know. I want to get back on a happy review. <laughs> For real. But, hey, you want to tune in next week to the Bro Four Squad podcast because can we get four straight weeks of Brian's leading question and theories and questions being what the fuck <laughs> is going on? Tune in next week. Appointment television right there. All right. Any last thoughts, Brian, before we let the people go? No, I, I have nothing more to say. Nate, how about you? I've said my piece. Yeah. Uh, just make smart decisions when you get your hair cut. We don't really usually say that on TV reviews, our words of advice, but I think I, I think it's good to end with some uh, positive. Something. Thank you. Positive? Yeah. It's not positive. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah, just I mean, it's just sound sage advice. That's true. It's friendly advice. We could, we could always use more of it in the world. Yeah. All right, for the mad scientist, Brian Banner, the American hero, Nate Thurman, I'm the mayor, Jeff Hornacek, and we are the Bro 4 Squad Podcast. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Please follow us on Twitter, at Bro 4 Squad. You can find us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere you find your podcast. If you type in Bro Force Squad as three separate words, and don't forget to go to our website, BroForSquad.com, to check out all of our content. And our running list as we count down our top 100 movies of all time. Till next time, we have to go talk to this hippo lady. I think she's working at the DMV and I need new tags. 
That's going to take forever. Do you have a number? Did you get a ticket? I thought it was just first come first. Fucking no, I'd need a number then. Yeah, I'm sorry. Back of the line.